We might be the Chihuahua. You are an ostrich. Eggs. Dilly din, dilly dong, come on. As electrifying as a hairdryer thrown into a hot tub, my friend. Aguero! Hello and welcome to another episode of the Honest Football Podcast, where we bring honesty back to the beautiful game. Joining me this week are my usual co-hosts, Daniel Cody and Craig Savage. Hello. Evening. On today's show, is there a place for sin bins in football? And what is the difference between the bottom half of League 2 and the top half of the National League? So guys, how's your week been? I got very sunburnt this week actually. Did I, you? I genuinely had, is fantastic. I had a bit of sunstroke. Like I've, I've actually had a really bad headache all day. Like I've drunk, I've genuinely drunk about twelve liters of water. I cannot shift it for the life of me. I've got one red arm because I was basically stood on top of a tower filming some sports stuff at school. Uh huh. So the sun was to my left constantly. So the whole left hand side of my body. Is now bright red, whereas the so right you, is white. What about you, Coates? What uh, takeaway is it this week? No, no, we're not going to talk about food no, this no week. No, no food this week. Oh, day. my days. I, I have had some takeaways, but we're just not going to talk about it. One other bit of news this week. I've decided to get fit. Hey! hey! <laughs> uh, it's about time for that one, though, fella. Mm. Taking up sport again. What, what are you taking up? I've taken up for the first time in six years I played a game of tennis this week. <laughs> Is that you used to be at Wimbledon or you just, uh, no, no, like just, 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 in, just in general? Used to be a sport I was actually semi good at, so that was the reason for it. And I was described as running through tree through <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, most of it, unfortunately. Were you at a club or just playing against like? Uh, just a casual encounter. Where, where was this at? Uh, this was at a local park. Oh, lovely. Yeah, against... She had a net there. Yeah, it does have a net so, here. I'm oh, not that bad. Were you playing against the missus or actually? Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it, was a, it was a decent standard, but the fitness is not what it used to be in my team. <laughs> just like, just, just no. one set? or uh, I got to about one and a half. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Started to fade, get a bit cramped. So. <laughs> I think that's time we moved on get to cramped. you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Segway into our own topic today. Great use of the word segway. I've got to say, great use of the word segway. <laughs> segway. Go on. Um, Sim bins, do you think a place for football? Sim bins have now been introduced for step seven of the football, non league football period. Um, really? Yes. Uh, our local um, league, the Bedfordshire County League, are going to trial it this season, from what I believe. Um, would you stand on that? Would you well, uh, I'll let you go ahead because I've got a few opinions on it. But I no, no, I don't think well, it's Okay, there's a couple of things. Got opinions, that's what we're talking well, about. Uh, my issue, and it is a purely logistical one. Is at the minute, if you get sin binned, where do you go? And, and what I mean is, at the football, top of the football period, I get that, you know, you've got a whole stadium, you've got, mm. where do you go if you're playing at your local, multi, I don't know, say Hackney Marshes, okay, let's say Hackney Marshes as an example, because uh-huh. I know it's full of pitch, uh, pitches. Yeah. If you get sin binned, where do you stand? Are you, are you with the substitutes? Like, what happens? It's just. How does the referee keep them off the pitch? And how does, exactly. How long do, how, how do they keep time of. Well, that's the thing as well. If you have to send in three players, what are you doing? You got three stopwatches or what? Like, I mean, the referees, particularly at the top levels, are already on so many watches. I mean, there's not many more they fit on their arm. Let's be honest. Yeah, I, I, that is one of the catches. Well, and are we going to have official time that, keeper? I, I don't think that can. I think they're going to make you Simbins was dissent. I think yeah. that's what I've heard. Yeah. But, but again, I, but you can still shout abuse from the sideline. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, for another six <laughs> feet away instead. Yeah. But dissent isn't you always one person. I mean, we've all played in games where there's been four or five lads giving it to him. Yeah, we've all been. Eight, does he Simbin all of them? If he does, you learn the old way, don't you? Well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, how do you reintegrate them back into the game? I just, I think it's a very silly idea. Like, I mean, what warrants a Simbin but not a red card? So, that's a good point. Very good point. Like genuinely, like, I don't know what's. I guess the thing can is... You, can yeah. you sub a player that's in the Simbin, though? Because oh. some of these will have roll on, roll off. So yeah, if, you sim- yeah. if you sub your player before you get Simbin... But surely that's smart enough to say, if you sub the player that's in the Simbin, the other player stays yeah, in the Simbin gonna be for the same length of time. Mm. He stays it's not going to be the same player? Well, yeah, it's that same yeah, player. It's still, yeah. it's still the same. Him back on and it's the same time player on the pitch, yeah. Do you have like a little coned area that they have to go in? <laughs> I'm out of But I'll sub it like a little head. Like a little pen that you can't come out of. It's like a recess with the with the box. Yeah, 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 you're not allowed out of the box. <laughs> you're out of the box and like the detention area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind the wall. I don't know, lads. I'm What's your view on it, Craig? Are you for or against? I'm against it because I don't think that's going to achieve anything. Okay. Well, I said I don't think referees keep time of it. I don't think the players, the players can shout abuse. 
from from me to you from 20 yards away it's still the same like mm. a, a, like a manager or a coach will shout out well shout out referees making a poor decision so well, there's no difference there yeah um, and obviously yeah as I said keeping time keeping track of it oh he's been sin I've got to make down my notebook oh he's been sin bin now I've got to book him well, do you, do you, do you, do you get that book? notebook for one sin bin yeah, yeah do you get well, can you get sin bin more than once like, well this is you it get, you what, get a second sin bin uh, for me no you shouldn't because you can't get booked for a foul and then you get I mean, have sin bin for the set and then come back on and then you get a second yellow. Do you know if it's a standard sin bin time? What I mean is, is, is like, is a different offence a different sin bin? It's or only is it used I for think, the set? I think it's, it's a standard set. Okay. It's, a, it's either nine or ten minutes. They did nine, ten minutes? I think they did nine minutes because it was ten percent of the game, so it's similar to rugby. Goodness me. I, I mean, the reason I'd asked you two first is because I had a feeling I was going to be the odd one out here. And so you, I, am, I am quite for it. I've, oh, God. I've done a bit of reading on it and I've come okay. quite to it. Go on, so no, no, I'm, I'm fairly open to this. Actually. So, obviously, the reason it's been spoken about and it came about in football is because of the respect campaign and all of that, with the Senate in particular, which is what's been useful. It's something it's been used for in rugby and ice hockey, among mm. other things. It's worked. Well, in rugby, ice hockey is just a violent mashup. So, let's not worry about that. Sport, anyway, but it has it. Has, it has worked in rugby. The thing I see it for with Descent is how many times, thinking about the professional game, if it ever mm. gets there, which is probably only a matter of time, is how many times do we see he's off, he's got two yellows in two minutes, he's got Descent the first time, and then he's got in a strop and he's kicked the ball away, or he's gone and at someone a minute later, potentially injured them and put a star player out for months. How many times do we see that just because of frustration? Mm. If that player's out for five, ten minutes, whatever it turns out to be, and they've just got a bit of time, to calm the situation, it will probably actually prevent red cards long term, which I guess is partly the other idea of it, isn't it? Well, do you think he, that? I don't think that it's half enough. Can it prevent the situation from calming down, or do you think right? I'm going to smash that play, and then I get back on the pitch in five ten minutes. Does he? Think, yeah, sorry, does he think? I think I, I don't know. For me, I think it, it's it's difficult in the sense of are you then taking away uh, the fact that I suppose what I'm trying to say is. Sometimes you see people sent off and you think two of those shouldn't have really result in him leaving the pitch. For me, for someone to leave the pitch, either they're saying something absolutely atrocious or they're a danger to other players. I do think people are sent off a bit too readily now. So I suppose it does play yeah, into that. Foul. So I had a bit of a... Yeah, but even then, like, sometimes you see two, two little like yeah. shirt pulls. That's not... You can't say that's dangerous play. Yeah, the sim bin can't be used for general no, no. fouls and that because it's too subjective. Yeah, otherwise there'd be no players in the I had, I had one idea for it and a good use for it, which would be for diving. So we've got a bit of controversy at the moment. Do you know what? VAR's likely to come in in the Premier League, the Football League, and anywhere else professional football-wise, eventually. At the moment, we have this weird situation with diving where if you get caught diving on the pitch, you get a yellow card. If you get caught diving after the game and you've won a penalty from it or whatever, you then get a two-game ban. Yeah, it's yeah. There's no equal punishment. Mm. If you've got VAR and you can see a dive and every player is out of that game for 10 minutes and your team playing for 10 men, team playing with 10 men for that time, is that not a benefit? Is that not enough of a deterrent? It's certainly a step up from a yellow card, isn't it? For a professional game, yeah. But when you've got your non-league game, where how can you where there's no VAR? How can you judge a player being accused of diving? We've got to think about this. Is that we've talked about on pretty much every show? Is every habit starts at the top? Yeah, and true. things like diving and things like descent have come from the top. I agree. With and that. if we can get those things out of the top by using those deterrents, you'll naturally see them decrease in the lower levels anyway. But I, I, I think you're I agree with you but I think you're being too nice to players who are very rude to a referee yeah. we spoke about a few weeks ago I think if you're if you're if it's, in, if it's in your thing to say call referee a, a C bomb or something like that you should just be off anyway but at the moment the referees are scared to do that because they don't want to give them a red card because they, they don't want to watch and they don't want to ruin the game and if you've got a yeah. in there they're more alright the punishment probably doesn't fit the crime but they're more likely mm. to actually get a punishment for the crime no, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming from. I, I don't know. I think there's a, there's quite a few logistics of it. You then, yeah. you know, it would take, take a lot of ironing out. Like, if you get, say you had five players, does that mean you abandon the game then? Who so, the sin bins, you know? Say the ref- well, for example, let's give another example where a referee's made a bad decision and players start, like, three or four players swamp the referee, you know, saying, no, 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 no
Well, maybe, yes, that's the way to get it out of the game. So you're, then mm. you might as well get well, the game. Well, that team, well, will that team do that again if they play for 10 minutes with seven men? What will those no, seven? If you're not. one of those seven players, what will you say in the dressing room? But maybe, I won't even go to the referee. <laughs> I won't run 20 yards to the referee and play. No, I agree. Team. But I think if they've been bad enough to do that, they probably shouldn't come back on. I think they should be sent off rather than... Yeah. That's but we see so many in the, in the professional leagues where players are hounding the referees. Mm. And if you can get the two or three main offenders off the pitch for 10 minutes, A, to get them out of the situation, but B... That team's playing with eight men or nine men. Yeah. There. That is surely going to have an effect. Surely a team turn around eventually and go, is this really worth it? But it's we, a better solution than a yellow card, isn't it? We, 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 see this yeah. in, we see this in other sports and rugby and some uh, like they make a bad tackle or a rash tackle that goes over the top. Obviously not for the scent. Yeah. They're, they're quite That's more respectful to the referees. Yeah. Um, but you don't seem you don't seem like accusing another player that you made that stupid tackle and now you're in the sin bin for the like, ten minutes. You don't see that compared to football. But so, I guess it's the different uses of it, isn't it? I mean, so so do we reintegrate them back into the game as a player in the way you would do, you know, if they've gone off for like an injury? I still think they should get fined for being in Simbin, though, as a player. Oh, yeah, if you get Simbin, you've got to be a number Same as in Sunday League, if you get fined for getting a yellow card, then you get the same thing. Yeah, you got, yeah. You, oh, you get, you get a Simbin before, uh, before you get a yellow card, but I still think you should get a fine because hmm. you've got that situation rather than. Oh, I've only just been sitting yeah. there. Oh, cool. Even though I'm for it, my biggest against worry, whatever you want to call it, is your one. Is how do you reintegrate them back into the game? We saw a game in the early stages of the World Cup featuring Senegal. It was a oh, yeah, second yeah. goal. Yeah, the player had gone off injured. He got waved back on, allegedly, mm-hmm. and was put through as he was running back onto the pitch. Was he mm. yard on side because he'd come from the touchline, went through, scored one. Well, it didn't matter anyway because the player clicked the back. No, but I think my, my, mm. my, my worry is is that happened at the elite level of the game with yeah. what? Four officials <laughs> at, in the ground plus yeah. VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on a say a Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning and you're that one referee and you've got a couple of club linesmen, how do you do that properly without... I mean, as I say, I think the biggest issue you're going to have is, is actually time. managing the time. And yes, the, time is going to How they get around now, I don't know That's if they're going to introduce That is it. the biggest problem with English football as it stands in the moment. It's because we're too scared to worry about this big Premier League brand they're trying to protect. It's everything starts at the lower league. And everything yeah. starts in non-league. And no, I agree with you It doesn't work. No. There are some things, this will not work in non-league. The step seven, mm. it hasn't got a hope in hell of working. But if it started at the top and could change the attitude and the things everyone watches on a Saturday afternoon, mm. potentially you could do that long term. Yeah, no, I agree. No, no, I think, I think. Yes and no. It, it's, it's a lot work. for referees. It's a lot to take in. Juggle with what they're already doing. I think that's anything. It's, I would it's say. still going to. It's, it's a trial. Obviously, it's a trial period for some uh, leagues, but I think it's going to be more paperwork for the, the county FAs and then the FA. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. I mean, I, I entirely disagree. I would say would just to play so devil's advocate. Semi-professional football. Oh, right, yes, I would say just to play devil's advocate ever so slightly. From an FA perspective, it probably wouldn't be a little bad. It wouldn't be a bad money earner. You think if you got that? No, but honestly, I mean, yeah. I'll be honest. Without naming names, I, I'm sure that the local um, FA here they have some referees who are just like cash cows. Yeah, I mean, some, some fat guy. Well, yeah, okay, we won't name him. But we That's what we're all thinking of. Yeah, <laughs> who, who is so card happy over literally the most insignificant stuff, and he must make them a bit of money. You know, they must have a, a not a quota, but I reckon they must have a, a thing a of fines, of money. money, or whatever. But again, at that sort of money. level, is that not going to put people off participating? Well, that's because the thing. Yeah, yeah. people can barely afford the subsidy yeah. kit. If you don't put that on as well, I mean, but what I mean is, is that actually that. that could, you know, I think the FAs might be in favour of it because it's another way of getting a bit more money. And that's back probably why it's been started yeah. on the lower levels. But that's the bit I disagree with. I agree with the principle, but I think yeah. it's only been a professional guy. Yeah. But I do think you know, yeah, you need to, you do need to manage that correctly. But anyway, like you said, it happens in other, in other. And, yeah. Sports and, stuff. and the most important thing is that it doesn't come in for for yeah. subjective instance such as foul tackles of do any you, form, things like that. It should just be descent or diving. Do you think it'll start stop the game? No, no, because most going to blow for a foul or anything. Anyway, like, not foul, but like the yeah. But then I'm not saying obviously they're going to set the referee's not going to stop the middle of the game. Just oh, you can come back on now because obviously it'd be like saying with well, just wait till the ball goes out of play. It should be that yeah, when their you, time ends, the next ball time the ball goes out of play. That's it. Mm. You would bring that in. Yeah. I do agree. I, I, I mean, I'm not... That's what right. happens with some of the injuries, to be fair. I'm not massively in favour, but I do agree that I think doing it at step seven and step eight, whatever it is, it's pretty completely pointless. wrong way of doing it. Yeah. You know, it's completely the wrong way of doing it. And you do need to start from the top, as we said before. But but I mean, again, I'll go back to this thing about this grassroots funding that we're, you know, supposedly coming from selling Wembley or this sort of stuff. In terms of refereeing, I'm going down a slightly different route, but there needs to be... If you're going to do this at step seven or whatever, you need to have the... 
resources and the facilities and the funding to do that. Otherwise, you're, you're asking one man for the sake of whatever they get, I don't know, say 45, 50 quid, but I don't know where a yeah. referee gets nowadays. But for that, you're asking a hell of a lot of him to do that and manage the game. And, and, that and, level, yeah, and you've got your own linesman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 you say, yeah. You've got no defence. It is mm. 24 entry. Because even the two, the the two teams and the managers and the linesmen. They're worse than some of the players. Even your position yeah, yeah, one more sports. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. He's going to have a good season. No, no, no. But um, I, do, I, do, I do agree with you on that. I think it is... I think no, it, I wish you come to a verdict on this. For me, it's got potential, but it has to be at the top level rather than semi-pro. I agree on that. Can't be in the bottom. It's gonna, it's gonna cause havoc. And it can only be for things that are objective. Do, 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 do the coaches get sin bin then? Well, that's the point. Sin. Yeah, I suppose yeah, much should work the same. Yeah, they, they, at the yeah, moment, but they get cards in the same way as players, don't they? Yeah. So, so how does that work? Because what? Am I going to stand one step to the left to go? Into well, the no. There is, there is an official ruling even on park pitches, isn't there? I don't know what it is, but if you get, if you're a manager and you get sent off. You're not allowed to win a certain distance of the pitch. But you think... But I, I can't remember what it is, like 100 yards or something. I don't know. But if this gets integrated in professional football in the Premier League and the Football League, there's going to be like a fifth or sixth... Or those those officials in the Champions League that stand behind the goals that are going to become <laughs> done when VAR comes in, they can go and stand in the little mm. naughty step box, can't they? No, no, they'll be in the VAR room. <laughs> <laughs> they are a waste of time. But that's well, that's another, that's another debate with VAR. But... Uh, so we're, we're sort of in agreement. We're sort of in agreement... Yeah, it, I think it, we all agree it, it, it's in the it, wrong place. It's, it's, wrong been place. it's not going to work where it's it, been tried, yeah. and that's going to delay it. But I think it will be inevitable in the future. It's that time of the podcast again. It's the shit list. We're going to do something slightly different. We have four choices for our right back in the shitless 11. Um, two didn't make it, Bakri Sanya and Ann Hutton. Rightly so. Really? Yeah, well, right. Sanya definitely been in that bracket. I don't know what you've got against him, to be honest. It's another story. But um, two other players I've got in con- uh, on this list, and Charlie's going to defend one, and Cody's going to defend the other player. So... I think, I think we're more likely to slate one. <laughs> well, 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 we'll see. So I'm, ready, I'm gearing up. Go on. I don't think it's going to be much Charlie. defending, much like the two right backs. <laughs> Charlie, your player who you should be, uh, who should think uh, should be in the shitlist eleven is Lionel Scaloni. Now I'm going to say already before we go any further, Dan's going to hit me with facts, <laughs> figures, stats, all of this. Okay. Okay. One, three lines. Three one lines. thing. One <laughs> thing that Lionel Scaloni is responsible for is the heartache. And you can throw as many stats and stuff, but that emotion that I experienced on that day in the as FA Cup Ham final, fan. yeah, as a West Ham fan, the FA Cup final out against Liverpool, I was at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, and all Lionel Scaloni had to do was let the throw go out for a goal <laughs> kick. All he had to do was do that. No, I'll ping it 40 yards up in the air, a couple of little bounces, Gerard smashes it in the top corner. I'm obviously done wrong in his whole No, but the career. fact is, the fact is, <laughs> no matter what else he's done wrong, you could say, oh, he was a, a very, um, I don't know, let's take it outside of football, very clean living man, but he shot someone. Okay, that one mistake is still irrefutable and irreplaceable of someone's life. And basically, there was a little part of me that died that day when Lionel Scaloni did Don't that. Don't we need to say legally that Lionel Scaloni is not shot? No, so yeah, legally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you'll probably tell me that he played for Deportivo. Is you know, all of these great things. Probably had a, probably a lovely bloke, to be brutally honest. However, but the fact is that 89th minute or 90th minute of the FA Cup final, West Ham. We haven't won it since 1980. Yeah. Yep. You know, Liverpool won it a few times. The, the the buzz around the stadium at that point, we thought, you know what, we're in stoppage time nearly. Yep. Just got to see the game out. Common sense, throw comes in, just let it go out. Okay, ball's been put out of play, just let the ball go out. No, it doesn't even, not even does he not clear it, he doesn't even clear it properly. He just puts it up in the air, yep. and then Gerard scores. So we're talking about the 2006 FA Cup. 2006 FA Cup. The year West Ham were first season back in the Premier League. Yes, yeah. yeah. They finished in the top half. Yeah. Yeah. And they got to the FA Cup final. No, Lionel Scaloni was a very key part. Of. Well, he signed in January, but yeah. yeah so, so, what else did Lionel Scaloni do? No, no, do? he doesn't that, need. No, 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 this is the point you're missing. <laughs> no, he doesn't no, need. That's my question. What else did he do that season? That's the question I'm asking. What else did he so do? What played, else did he do that season? He played 13 times. Didn't score a single goal. Okay, he got released. Not uncommon for right back. Yeah, I understand that. I'm saying. To be fair, he did get one assist, and it was in the FA Cup final. For West Ham against Liverpool. Sorry, it was for Liverpool against West Ham. Exactly. He hooked it straight to Xavi Alonso or Steven Gerrard and G- Gerrard done the rest. We know the story about that. You you can't take away from the fact that he literally cost us. Yeah. And I promise you now, you can go, go on the internet, you can look at forums and all sorts. 
West Ham fans still hate that man. Okay, so and it's still to- he's still talked about now. Line of so Scaloni. I've been to the London Stadium. You was a season ticket holder at yeah. the London Stadium. There's no line of Scaloni anything. No, why would there be? I'm like, just saying. I'm, the point is, is what he is could he? have been. He could well, be a World well, Cup well, winner. The fact is, West Ham. You know, you know, as a club like West Ham, we're never going to win the league. The only chance is still where you got is a League Cup, which really nowadays no one gives a hoot about, or the FA Cup. Okay. For us to get to the final was an effort in itself, of which he was an integral part, and I will concede that. <laughs> However, a man of his experience, who's played at Deportivo for over 200 times, Sounds and was an bad. Argentinian international, should know that in the 90th minute, you don't just kick the ball to that centre midfielder, you let it go out for a goal Can kick. Can I ask you a question, Sean? Go on. You know the right-backs you've got now, as yes. an established Premier League team? Yeah. They're even better than Lionel Scott. No, they're not, they're not. But the point you're, the point you're missing is, oh, he made one, consistent. not one little error, one cataclysmic error that led, led to us... <laughs> Losing, well, okay, they equalised, and a lot more happened after. But the game was in our hands. Literally, we threw it away, or not we, he He threw it away. (laughs) So, I mean, you can fire all you want at me. It will never replace the heartache and the... I don't know, a heart wrenching experience. The problem of is, Charlie, that. you were extremely biased here. Yeah, no, and I agree. Yes, what we're talking but about. He's a West Ham fan, and the West Ham fan. Yeah, yeah. What we're talking, yeah, yeah. What we're talking about. about is a minor error. Right. Mine? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> minor error, no which error. has led to a fantastic. <laughs> just, just to but add, the goal just should to, never have happened. Just to add it on um, with the shit list, he did peg it to Portsmouth. Portsmouth are shit. <laughs> like, shit list for a reason, Brendan. So just go over the fact list. I mean, my thing for Lionel Scaloni is that. Deportivo in the yeah. early 2000s were most of my Champions League viewing as a child yeah, yeah. because that's okay, the only yeah, game that ITV were allowed to have. And Diego Tristan. Yeah, Diego Tristan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they were a crazy Roy Mackay. Yeah. And he was brilliant for him. Yeah. Say, he played over 200 times. He was integral in some huge performances, particularly against English teams, actually. And he's, he got Javier Zanetti out of the team at the 2006 yeah, yeah. World Cup. That's a good right yeah, back. You're, 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 perhaps he was too good for West Ham. No, problem. well, maybe, but if he was too good, why did he not let it go out for a goal kick? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he didn't get it it was English. If you watch it back, you could. Uh, he just hit it. He had no idea it was going. Just let it go out for a goal kick. Honestly, <laughs> even now, you know, every year, every year, just, it all, all comes flooding back to me because every year when they do the build up to the FA Cup final, they always show that bloody goal so, just after Lionel Scaloni hit it up in the air. So, what we've got basically is. That Steven Gerrard scored a great goal in the FA Cup final. You yeah. see a replay of it every year and just notice that little error. And no, because it was <laughs> not, that, it was, not the, that Shaq has has been beaten for 35 yards. Yeah. It's sorry, the fact yeah. that Lionel Scaloni shanked his. Yeah, but kids. it was a completely avoidable sorry, situation. Sorry. That's oh, the point. Okay, I'm okay, at. okay. Made the catastrophic error, or whatever yeah, yeah. word you use. Catastrophic. But it, yeah, sorry. <laughs> whatever. Even I said that properly. Fair play. Well, the, po- the point is that apart from that. He was a very good fullback. He was a yeah, good player, right. and you've said so yourself. And he was integral on a run to the final. No, agree. Which you probably wouldn't have got to if you hadn't signed him in January. <laughs> it's like a bloody Christian Daly, wouldn't it? Yeah, they <laughs> cut started in January. Daly, Daly, that Daly, that was, um... No, 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 no. But you, you, I mean, you imagine getting to the playoff final as a Luton fan, okay? And your fullback instead of letting the ball go out for a goal kick, knocks it up in the air, and someone or if a centre forward side chips a penalty down the middle. <laughs> Yes, but you know the way you felt or then. Or heads onto the post. Or onto the the post. way you felt then. Or like that's how I feel every time I hear Lionel Scaloni. Or they skip training for a week to celebrate twelve hours. You know, <laughs> one of those things. But, they skip training for that. Sorry, they skip training for that. Yeah. Okay. They had a whole day TV promotions and squash sports. Oh sure. Christ! <laughs> but the point being, if you imagine that that's that person, that you're you're feeling then that bitterness okay. you just felt. That's exactly how I feel about. Yeah, Lionel but that's Scaloni. a personal thing. We're talking about someone who's in the shit list as a. Player. Okay, right. Who else was on the shit list? Right. Like? Okay, so. Obviously, Lionel Scaloni is an option. Cody, you've got your option. Please tell us. I would like to hope that if this ever went to a public vote, I'd be winning hands down. Right. I actually I'm have... sure the public vote would have gone to Love Island or something like that. But right. <laughs> I actually have two names, which I'm only going to use one of because it led me back to the other name, which Craig's already had a chuckle at during this, trying to make me lose my professionalism. <laughs> so we're going to start okay. with the man who I'm nominating, and that is England international, well, multi Premier okay. League clubs. England international or Argentina international? Which one's more exotic? Okay? It's Danny Mills. Okay. okay. So I've got half a page of information about him. Go, Go on. on about Danny Mills. All things which annoy me. <laughs> so let's start with his early career, which was great. He, got, okay. he yeah. helped get Charlton into the Premier League. Played in that epic 4-4 Sunderland uh, playoff final. We're going down a similar route to Lionel Scaloni at the minute. We are. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 this is this. We are. I'll ask questions. question, isn't it? The good part ends at three years rather than ten years. Right, okay, yeah, cool. So... We're going to move on, skip to 2002 now, by which time is at Leeds. We have the World Cup, the England golden generation, if you remember. Mm-hmm. The, wow. How do we get all these men in midfield because they're all world class? Okay. We've got the abundance of centre half to choose from. We've got both Neville brothers. We've got people like Carragher and Ledley King who can't even get to the squad. Okay. 
Gary Neville picks up an injury before the World Cup. Our golden generation. We pick at right back as first choice, which may say more about Sven than Danny Mills, I accept, but he picked Danny Mills. Phil Neville was left out of the squad after playing over 30 right, times so for United. Right, he's so After playing over 30 times for United. Still right. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's not evidence to play that, the England. Well, he, he was lost a it very after the Euros. Player. We got in Euro 2000. It cost us Euro 2000 against bloody Romania, if you remember. Yeah, so, I remember that. Three Euro remember. squads in a row, never played at the World Cup. Good. He's awful. Yeah. Well, Moving on. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> Jamie Carragher, as we've mentioned, wasn't yeah. in the squad, was an able deputy. Again, we had a, a young, very talented at United at the time, Wes Brown, who was mm. an excellent defender, sat on the bench while Danny Mills played. Right. Yeah, it's not bad. It's West not Danny, but it's not Danny Mills' fault, is it? It's not Danny Mills' fault, but he was played. What we're saying is, who's on the ship this team? You said it's just one moment, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah okay. Danny Mills was playing right back for England in the Golden Generation World Cup. Yeah. That's all that needs to be said. But as it yeah, happens, I've got plenty more to say. That team got first to the quarterfinals of all, the World Cup. Right? First of all. The quarterfinals. First yeah, of all. The first golden all. generation. You bet that's not his fault that... that Danny Mills... Mills I right, thought... Seaman got lost, did it? Sweden. Da- da- <laughs> no, 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 no. Danny Mills... I think, yeah, I think he kind of messed up for the goal against Sweden. Mm-hmm. But Danny Mills played a part for the goal for Michael Owen against Yeah, there we go. He did. Good point there, Mr. Yeah. Craig. He, played, he did make a part for that. But... With him in England... He looks so unorthodox. Yes. Yeah, but, but I don't think he plays for England after hang that. Hang on, hang on. You can't tell me he needs to be in the shit list just because he looks a bit unorthodox. He doesn't. He doesn't need to be in the shit list just for that. So let me give you another five and six. Hold on, minutes, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Did Danny Murphy play in the FA Cup final though? Which one? Danny Mills. Did he ever play in the FA Cup final? Uh, I don't think Did he have a chance to make a mistake in an FA Cup no, final? No, no, but hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't use that as a reason to not put him in the shit list of Michael Owen's I'm, I'm just putting I'm just putting the questions out there. Did he play in the did Danny Mills play in the FA Cup final? Was he good enough? Was he good enough to there? help get a side to the FA Cup? No, but he final. played for England more times than what Scaloni played for Argentina. Yeah, but that's because Scaloni had Lloyd uh you have the Yeah, and, he, and what's what's his name had Gary Neville in front of him, so it's the same difference, surely. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I like Gary Neville. <laughs> I love Gary Neville. But um not only did um Danny Mills play for England against Brazil where Ronaldinho loved Dave yeah. yeah. but Danny Mills tried to introduce the B League yes um, and it was a though. large part of the under 21 group when, 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 when he part of the FA debate of trying to improve yeah. like the yeah. youth players and, and that led to this Czech and Trade who, who, who else was in that group Rio Ferdinand I think it was okay so why is he not on the shit list then because Rio Ferdinand is amazing well what's the difference you're saying that they, no, they no. both played for England they both played in that game where England Rio Ferdinand he led teams to a fight no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but they both played in that game okay they both were in that steering group for going in for the B, B league whatever it is so why is it Danny Mills is in there but Rio Ferdinand isn't I'll tell you team. why because he played for United yeah. you're no. just as bad as the FA you do I'll tell you Rio Ferdinand has won a Champions League multiple Premier Leagues um, Enough about Rio Ferdinand. He's a world-class player. Yeah, yeah. Which is something you cannot say about him. No, no, I understand that. Rio is a fantastic pundit. Is Rio Ferdinand a world-class player, Charlie? Oh, he is, absolutely. Uh, was Danny no, Mills, was Danny Mills a world-class player? No, but neither, That's why but neither was Lionel Scaloni. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Scaloni was a lot better. No, 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 no. Right, I've got another thing for Danny Mills. Okay, so, a game against Arsenal. Just the early part of this millennium. He had it. Oh, we had a card instance. I was just about to say this. I was just about to say this. I've earlier. seen it recently. I've just Watch seen a clip on YouTube today, and it's, it's a little bit of a viral hit. It's Danny Mills has the ball in open play at right back. Thierry Henry, I believe it was, was on the floor injured. It may not have been him, so please. Just I think it's actually Cole. Maybe so. I may have been wrong. But Danny Mills had the ball in the right back area. In open play, there's a player who's only got an advantage, a chance to make a counter attack. The referee hasn't blown up. What does he do? He stops the ball, traps it at right back, kicks it against Thierry Henry. Gets a second yellow card. Yeah. What is... Uh, lead to it on to Yeah, but can I just say, you compare that to the magnitude of an FA Cup final. <laughs> okay. But however, can I just quickly add, you are forgetting he was, an, he, was in, he was shortlisted for goal of the season in 2006. It was a good goal. 2006. Right, 2006. Two, he scored in 2005. Yeah, second of October 2005. From 25 yards, he smashed it in the top corner of Mevin. Arguably one of the greatest, uh, I don't know, greatest Premier League goals you're going to see. So you can't tell me he, he wasn't a good I think player. you may have exaggerated with the greatest dress. No, if, it, hang on, if, that <laughs> Just makes, if that makes the top ten of a, a, a goal of the season... But it won't be for me. <laughs> oh, come on. You're just being bitter now over that. You can't tell me that that wasn't a good finish. Let's Sorry, keep going. Let's, let's keep going. Keep going. That, so I know he's going. He's heading he to Derby County now. He's, he's heading to Derby County. I'm not even there. Yeah. He did that for Leeds. I'm gonna... I remember him scoring a worldie for Leeds against Bolton. Yeah. At the Reebok. He did the worldie against... Was that while Simon Charlton was marking him? 
Uh, probably was. Yeah. Or Bruno and Gotti. <laughs> I would like to add that Danny Mills did play for Middlesbrough in the League Cup final. He did. He I did. had that on there. And, and, and he didn't mess up. And, and he didn't mess up. And he won it actually. So oh, there you go. Exactly, exactly. As you said, the League Cup, which no one cares about. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. <laughs> so thanks. But for I'm sure Middlesbrough fans back in 2004 thinks it's very crucial because it's the only trophy they've ever fucking yeah. won. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to move on to a moral issue just quickly before okay, we got to Derby County, which was obviously we had the financial trouble with Leeds around 2004 when he got relegated. Yeah. Just after the season, he'd been on loan at Middlesbrough. He continued, along with Olivier de Court, to receive most of his wages for the two years after, something that nearly bankrupted Leeds. Oh, shit. So, I mean, Maybe we can have this argument now about someone like Jack Codwell, but, you know, that's another argument he, he, for another day. Okay. But... The main thing is morally. That's a little bit of a yeah, okay, a yeah, sticky yeah. issue. I, I understand that, but it's not a, a, a shit list thing. And then it? we move on to well, the okay. elephant in the room, which is Derby <laughs> County's eleven point season, Charlie. Any players? Any player <laughs> that like? Okay, go on. This. I'll let you say a bit because there's a, there's a massive hole in this for me. But I'll let you go. No, first. no, no. I've got no because I've got the no, vote. Because you're saying you're saying that. Yes, he played in that team that we all yeah. know was probably the worst Premier League team ever. But, but he didn't really play, did he, lads? That's the no, point. That's just that's what no, but because he I'm played what, two games, two I'm games, and then got injured. I need to stop you here because we had this debate with Jimmy Trail, right? <laughs> and <laughs> you said, "What sort of man turns up at a club on loan on big wages, plays two games, gets injured, yeah. and then doesn't turn up again, but collects his wages but, for the season?" Who else did that, Charlie? No, but if you remember, he was put on the shit list for that own goal against Burnley. Yes. That was the main and you used that as your main support? No, I did not know. Good, I did not know. You did Danny Mills back. do something against Portsmouth? I did, probably did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm Portsmouth going to sum fans. up now really quickly. Danny Mills is probably worthy of being on the shit list if it wasn't for Lionel Scaloni and the fact that he single-handedly, single-handedly cost West Ham <laughs> the, uh, with winning a trophy. Sure. The, the last one we'd won for uh, 25 sure. years by that point. You forgot one thing. The- Lionel Scaloni, he's retired. He's, I believe, yeah. he's one of the assistant coaches at uh, Argentina. Now. Right, kicked out of my face. There's nothing to worry yeah. about. Danny Mills has been butchering <laughs> BBC radio Lone commentary. Live. BBC Radio, paid for by the license payers. He has been butchering our ears for multiple years now. The B League thing is something that personally annoys me as a really League fan, but I'm yeah. not going to get involved with that. But he's still in our faces. He still comes along and talks absolute shit he turns up on every transfer deadline day talks about subjects he has no idea about so like like but you know. however what I would say if it was down to entrepreneurial skills I don't care about that Danny Mills should not be on the shit list due to the fact that he owns part of the West Cornwall Pasty Company and which is wait whenever I go to St Albans a firm favourite of mine to go and visit even though it's nowhere near West Cornwall but where is he from where is he from is that not the real Cornwall the real he, run, he runs marathons for charities and all sorts. So I think you'll be. Oh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> the one positive I have is the charitable work, but that's not enough. I mean, no. as you're talking about the, the biggest difference. Yeah, you're, you're, do charity, you're talking about one specific incident yeah, which hurts okay. you as a personal fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a career full of things that aggravate me. I would say full. And more than his playing career, which doesn't bother me hugely, by the Derby thing, where my other candidate, by the way, Derby, by was way. Mark Edworthy, who had four relegations, <laughs> including that Derby thing, but he was displaced by Danny Mills, who got injured, so you know, enough about that. But my biggest problem with Danny Mills is what he's done since his career on TV or radio. Okay. Just go away, man. I, I understand that, but the whole point of the shit list is people who've done stuff wrong on the pitch as players. I appreciate he is an awful pundit, and I'll, I'll, I'll back you on that 100%. All I'm saying is, is if we're doing the shit list on individual stuff, then Lionel Scaloni has to win hands down. But if anyone who's been in that Derby team, anyone... But he wasn't in it, or was he really? That's the point. Look, he was I, collecting I, I, the money, so they couldn't get anyone else. Right, you need to clear this up now, because we're going to go all right, about this. First of all, you both made other points. Ish. <laughs> I'm not counting Derby for this bit, because okay. you only played two games, it's only a certain amount of games, I'm going to... Probably five. I'm going to give the right back slot... To Danny Mills. Oh, <laughs> this is a travesty. <laughs> but Lance is what? very Too many foreign players. No, like, can you just give me the rationale for it? <laughs> we, we, we don't want a whole team of foreign Why now? Why, why, no, why Danny I, Mills? I, I really don't like Danny Mills. Yeah, but that's not a reason to be on there, is it? I think you played well with this morning at right centre off. Yeah, and I never rated Danny Mills as a player at all. Oh, this is it. Lance Scaloni, don't get me wrong. I'm going to remember this now next week when we do one of these. Don't get me wrong. Like what Lionel Scaloni did in the FA Cup final in front of 80,000 people at Cardiff was but he got pretty silly. He got himself. Yeah, I still think he should have left the ball. He should have stayed out for goal kick. Wait a bit more time. There's still, there's, it only takes a second to score a goal. But we see Danny Mills more consistently 
on TV, radio, even during the Premier League years. <laughs> hey, we only saw Lionel Scaloni for half a season. <laughs> We've only seen Lionel Scaloni for half a season. Plus, you, 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 you can't see that my head is currently in my hand because I just cannot believe the cods wallop I'm listening to. But oh, shame on me. Right, I'll, I'll remember this. So, I'll, I know, I'll remember this kind next of week when next week. When next week when there's two other players. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Mate, you two will fight out probably again. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm think we should get you in a fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, you could you fight. moan about Chris Small and you moan about other players in recent. That's why I got you two to do yeah, it. Well, so, I yeah, still think Danny Mills is going to be right back in the shit list. Which is bollocks in my opinion, but we'll go with it. But Danny Mills might get injured or talk shit and then Ryan Scaloni have to go. End of. So, what is the difference between the bottom half of League Two to the top half in the National League? And probably a shit ton of money, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the TV deal, probably the Football League is to the National League is quite different. But if you look at like average attendances, like top five um, clubs from last season: Tranmere, Wrexham, uh, Orient, Hartlepool, and Aldershot were the top five average attendances. If you put that. Uh, highest attendance from Tranmere is 5,293 into the Football League. They'll be in the top six. Uh, six. I mean, that's quite high for a... a I know Tranmere's like a bit, one of the bigger clubs in the National League, but still, compared to what we have like bottom half of um, League Two, it's quite ridiculous. It's something we're quite actually experienced on, isn't it? I've been from Luton and a few yeah, years right. suffering in the conference where we had the third highest attendance in League Two spot in the conference. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like Morecambe, Morecambe was the um, Morecambe was the lowest for average attendance of one thousand four hundred and ninety-two. If you put that in the National League, they would be sixteenth. Well, talk about Accrington. They went up this year. What was Accrington there? were not further, not much further. Accrington were the second. Can lowest. I can I tell you with Accrington? Have you got have you got the number for Accrington? Uh, no, oh, you can go on. Because Accrington, I went to Accrington away this year as a Luton Town fan, which we absolutely placed them by the way. It's two more winners. An uncovered terrace stand. About five rows deep, pissing down with rain, wind swirling. Twenty pound to stand there. By the way, it's going to be more next season. Now when they get the it's going to be more run. next season. The attendance, just over two thousand. And how many are already fans? Do you think out there? Nearly six hundred. <laughs> it's about a third of the ground. But we had this in the conference how many times where you go into leisure centres and you've got more fans than the home fans. But is a, a barometer of a club is like the way you judge a club based on the number of people that go there. Because if, if you do, no, yeah, because and the only time I'm going to mention the Premier League on this. You look, take Bournemouth for example, very yeah. small ground, but obviously a Premier League club. So, is that when you say what's the difference between the two? Are we uh, just no, basing I'm not, I'm not, not, not going to base it just on the tendencies. I'm basing on the, the quality of football. Like Tennessee. we've watched Cody. You've watched a lot of uh, National League games on that's been live on BT Sport and the highlight show on the YouTube, you know? and also we watched and in, League, <laughs> and in person. And we've watched a lot of uh, well, I've watched a lot of League Two football. Mm. There is not much, not much difference, well, especially with the, bottom, like, the higher teams. Yeah, like obviously teams are up there with Luton, uh, Ac- or Accrington, uh, Leighton or uh, not Leighton, right? Uh, Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln, Coventry, Lincoln. Exeter. There, there's a bit of a stretch from them six, seven, eight teams compared to the bottom five, like Barnet, Chesterfields, your yeah. Forest Greens, I, 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 Forest Green promoted. But compared to like, if you pay them like last season, compared to <coughs> Tranmere and Bournemouth. There'll be a, a lot of tight games. I think most of the national league teams have been. I think one of the biggest problems now, in particular, is teams like Barnet's a perfect example of yo-yo between the two divisions so many times. Teams like Forest Green. Uh, that's what I put. Yeah, Forest Green have been trying for so long to get up, and as they've got up, the conference has become the way for those bottom. Let's say about ten of the clubs near the bottom of League Two, and about the top half of the conference. They're basically they are the best division. They're probably the most even division. When you say best, match. you mean evenly matched. Yeah, the, yeah. Most, uh, the best to be in the division together. Yeah. I, I, I don't think. Um, I think there's. It's some teams are quite lucky. Bottom half league too. There yeah. are a lot of lucky teams that they can easily go down to the national league, and I don't think it's fair with the promotion and relegation. Yeah, that. it's odd that there's like two, two that teams got going up. One of my biggest points. Um, in the show. Absolutely. And I think where there was a debate years ago, there should be three up and three down. But you could argue that that's caused this problem because it used to be one up, one down. And it used well, to before, be... before that... So it was it just up. a winner and you know, there's just no point Before that, back in the 80s, you had to be invited yeah. back to the football Well, that's, that's something that we've gone past now. That's so fast because it wasn't there for footballing reasons, which... Well, no, it was from ground stuff. Ground, ground like, reasons, rubbish. political reasons and all but, that. Yeah. Ste- Although Steam is right. Steam is right. They, yeah, the they right. can go up for ground reasons. Yeah. But um, I've, I think there should be a change for two, um, three up, three down. And I've got a suggestion... Okay. Um, of how we can do this. Top two go up. You have a playoffs. 
with uh, the other six, four teams. They have their normal playoff rounds as they normally do, as you would see in other countries. Yeah, some other countries. Some of the countries, like you've seen Scotland, uh, Holland, Germany. Yeah. Obviously, when it was oh, that, so is this where like the, the winner, the winner third of the, bottom of whatever plays? Yeah, so the third bottom will play game. the winner of the playoff of the side. Right. Yeah, but in teams like Germany, they don't always do that. They just have the third, the team who's third. They don't have a playoff. They just play third bottom v third top. And they just yeah, play, that's it. But it will make it interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. I think I think it's, it's a great reward for the like third like um, if for we're gonna, the team that goes up. And it makes a bit more competition for the team that gets relegated. I know there's two places, but it makes no. it makes more interesting for the but like, there's more teams in it to get relegated than it would be just. I think it reduce the risk some of the teams. If, if, well, if we're going to talk about playoffs for a bit, then I do not think it's slightly unfair if you're that team in the division below who's played the whole season, end up you know finishing whether say say for argument's sake third, won the playoffs, you know, or got to the position where you got them the playing and lost the it. team from the league above, and then you lost it. Yeah. Do you not think you've done enough it's already exactly to win what happens but, to Scotland? To go exactly what happens. Yeah, but do you not think you've done enough then to go up by that point? But, Surely you've beaten everyone around you, well not beating everyone around you, but you've... But this is where I don't think it's fair, where you've got 96, 92 points and you don't go up. Ah, well, I've got the answer to this, and it's my favourite one. I've had a little look at a few of the t- ones around the group, and my favourite one's the Italian one. There's a lot about the Italian league I don't like, but Serie B is a brilliant example. So they have the top two go up as normal, the bottom three coming down as normal. The team in third place... We always have this situation that we talk about quite a lot in the Championship and League One. Three teams are running away with it and only two are going to get to go up. Yeah. In Serie A, Serie B, sorry, the third team goes up if they're more than 14 points clear of fourth place. They go up what? automatically. And That's a no stretch. Play. That's if they're good. not, if they're not, they have a normal playoff and everyone up to and including eighth place can play as long as they're within 15 points. And oh, it's based so on how many so points away the you team, are. The team in eighth could get promoted. But only if over Maybe the course of the points. season they're within that certain amount of points. Oh, so of third you, place. Of, 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 of. Exactly. So you can you can only get there if you have a consistent season in comparison to the team at the top of the playoffs. So you haven't got this well third place with one point behind the automatic promotion. I think it happened with Brighton a couple of years ago where they were on about 87 and then the next team yeah. in the playoffs were 74, 71 and 70 and it's you're in that situation where yeah. why are they not playing there? But you can eliminate that situation. That sixth team is automatically in the playoffs. Going back to the original topic, then would do you think that sort of method would then not method or sort um, yeah probably method, I don't know. method yeah. would even out the leagues in the sense of would the I difference between say the top of League One be a, a closer with the bottom of League One than what it is say now for example or you know you know what you were saying what's the difference between League One and the it's conference? rewarding consistency rather than going for a nil-nil and nicking the odd result isn't it it's, yeah. it's rewarding yeah, you can't, you can't, not getting an extra point for the scoreless draw no I'm joking <laughs> don't mention the, biggest the extra problem, point <laughs> the biggest problem with the Football League playoffs at times as we always say with the third run in the way is it doesn't reflect the consistency of the whole season I think, yeah, you look at um, a couple of seasons ago, Luton were in the playoffs against Blackpool, 4th v 7th. Yeah. And Luton were, I think, about 8, 9, 10 points ahead of them. But yet the team in 7th yeah. beat them and won the playoffs. I, I do quite like that Italian model if you're within <coughs> touching distance or whatever that threshold yeah. might be. But I, th- I think... But they have, it, a, they I have think, a bigger league. Have a yeah, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, I think, think it's on a principle. It makes it more... I think it'll make it more competitive for the lower league teams. Oh, we've really got to fight for something here. I think, I think some... Like, You'll get four or five teams like, oh yeah, we're safe now, we're with so many points. But if you've got that extra spot there for the like, relocation battles, ah, oh, that are in more teams, like, they can drop in here. Mm-hmm. And with the National League side, they'll still be as competitive as before, but it gives that third place club an opportunity. We want to see new clubs, we want to see new clubs look like Maidstone and yeah, Boreham Wood if you and AFC the, Fly. If you look at the comps Sutton. this year, they were fifth, the fifth, sixth and seventh. The second and third were Tranmere and whoever else, you know, we were always up there. You're more yeah, likely that's to what I'm saying. You like never there. know what could happen in that. What? And that new club can go into the uh, football league. So what's the rationale? If you, I mean, if you don't know, don't worry. But So for example, is it four that go down from League One? Four go down from League yeah. One. And then two from League Two. Yes. Three from League Two. Two, two down from League Two. Two, two, two from League Two. Two. Why, 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 why is, is it so inconsistent? And then obviously going closer then you've got a championship, which is three yeah. from the championship. Like why, what, what's the... Why is it? Why is League One, for example, the one that's more places that are in jeopardy almost? And that's probably... We talk about the this being the jump, there not being much of a difference, probably even more broadly, between the National League and League Two, because there are so many teams, like Stephen Inch, an example, yes, straight we, up and straight up. Luton a lot went up the first season they were in the Football League again. Bristol Rovers? Eight. Bristol Rovers? Yeah, Bristol Rovers have done it as well. So there's plenty of examples. Is is it because there's 
there's a greater reward in League Two. You can get in the playoffs finishing seventh. You don't have to worry about being a top six team or a, you've got that extra opportunity. Does it force teams to push their standard to a higher level, perhaps? Yeah, it, it could create more money. Yeah. If you have it this way, well, more TV it? time as well. You can obviously show the games like. I mean, like one can show on Sky the other one shows on BT because obviously BT do the National League and Sky do the Football League the most important Great, thing for me that. is not getting rid of the playoffs entirely because the, the, there are a couple of leagues where it's just a straight three up three yeah, down, yeah. Which, I like the playoffs it's cruel it's cruel. cruel as fuck yeah. but it does you say about the playoffs or you could lose to a team that are ten points below you but equally if it's three up three down you could be third and be goal difference ahead of four fifth and sixth yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. so yeah. You no, get an argument with that. Well, yeah, you look, well, you look at Braintree, they got promoted, they were promoted from 7th. I mean, from a neutral perspective, the playoffs are good, you know, and I imagine it generates a lot of excitement and a lot of money. Well, you've had people. that with West Ham. West Ham yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean is, is that. And yeah. we've had it too many times with Luton. But even though we lost out in most of those games to teams that finished below us, they're still the games from the season you remember and you talk about years later. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. we're talking now, and the first games we think of are the one where Jason Walker chipped the penalty. And we lost the playoff final. And the mm. offside goal. And they're the first games the that come to our minds. So they're obviously, as a fan point of view, they're ones that stick with us for years. Yeah, but so did, I suppose to because we play us make it more uh, make it a, uh, a better promotion season than actually going out automatically. Yeah, yeah probably. But I think what we're trying to get to is the the point at the beginning of the the, yeah, the piece was about definitely. is there much of a difference and if you readjusted the playoffs slightly, would that level the playing not level the playing field? Would it make the gap between League One and co- the conference larger, or would it actually make it smaller in terms of standard and I, you know I, money and all of that sort I of thing? I think there's so many teams that are so close that it wouldn't make a huge difference. To no, be honest. I, think, I, you, I feel like it's um, even though like for, for your it's not there, but it looks like there's a, a league there anyway. So I feel like for the first time ever on this podcast, we're probably not actually going to change something about football off the back of a conversation. And we're probably going to agree. Yes, as you say, yeah. <laughs> we should agree on, on this. On previous ones, we've always gone, no, we need to start doing this, or that needs to be changed, or whatever. But actually, I think... Oh, so what we're saying is, is although there's a gap between the three, yeah. actually, it's, it's enough that it's competitive, and we're quite happy with the system as it is. And playoffs in general. In whatever yeah. form I turn up in various... One thing I hope never happens, and this is a slight tangent, they never have that stupid split in the league that they have oh. in some countries, which does my head in. Well, you can have a team who's six on one. 54 points and a team who's seven is on 74. And you think, I can... You oh, know, well, but they, you know, they do that split when they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah in Scotland. Oh, that's the only playoff one I don't like work. is, again, the one they have in Scotland where you win the playoffs and then still have to play a playoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, That's think. cruel. Yeah. But the way we have it in England and most other countries, whether it's third, felt and third top or whatever, they all work. It's a good system. Mm. It's a good spectacle. Well, you, and so, it gets the neutral watching football. So, do you think that, like, obviously we said, well, there's a difference between League Two and uh, National League. But what about from League One to League Two? So obviously four relegations um, spots. Oh, three one. across the board. No, I'm not saying three across the board. Would, mm. would you have like a red, like a playoff one with the fourth place team? No, I just have. I now I think if you go down in in fourth from bottom from League One, you're hard done by a bit in my opinion. You know, I don't know who well, that yeah, was. You that, got, was that well, Oldham? Well, you down from. You Oldham, down from. Yeah, I think it might have been whoever it was anyway. The only the only uh, change I would have Oldham. in the football yeah. system. It's not actually a playoff one. It is. Three down from League One and three down from League Two and even it out across the board. Yeah, That's my so own I, think, I think it is unfair to be. I mean, you're talking especially out of the league. How did it round up from League Two? <laughs> yeah, so sort of 24 teams and then the bottom four go. That's a lot of football to be played to then still get relegated. Yeah. Especially like you say, if the gap between fourth and bottom and third from bottom is an extortionate amount of points, say 10, 12 points, which could, it has happened, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, I think it depends on obviously the gap between fifth and fourth from bottom as well. Yeah, but I just think fourth from bottom and is a lot. Perhaps if you get three teams going down from League Two, you will get more of the shit teams that are naturally mm. confident oh, teams I'm down in cheer, and you'll have yeah, that situation like we, all, where we all want Stephen Schmidt and Kings Don to go down. <laughs> <laughs> so if we'd have had three places this year, Tranmere would have come up automatically. Tranmere would have come up automatically. And another and team would have gone um, down automatically, who are likely to not, not be shot. quite as big a club. I don't know who their <laughs> team was. So that's yeah. the point, really, isn't it? Well, it's, I think this is a bit of a turn up for the books, lads. So we've actually agreed on something, and we're probably quite happy with the way football is. But I think it was still a very uh, it's weird, worthwhile, we actually... detailed discussion.
Now it's time for the question of the day, and at the moment it's still nil nil. I mean, you have been asking questions from what feels like university challenge or something like that. <laughs> well, th- this is it. For me to find these questions is absolutely fantastic. But you I'm sort of hoping... played on both of our weaknesses, which is the fact that Daniel's not doesn't know anything about pre two thousand football. To be honest, due to age, not due and to And me, age. if it, if it's not the World Cup or West Ham, really, I'm stuck. To be honest, so I can't well, the really. The question is about there was Lionel... a World Cup question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's well, true. Actually, yeah, yeah. No, there, there's a question about Lionel Scaloni today. Oh, I have a day. Oh, oh, you're I'm you're joking, 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 I'm joking, joking. Joking. It's not like a Scaloni. <laughs> right, go on. So, oh, what's our buzzers this week, brother? Um, You've got to come up with an, an I don't think we're going to need buzzers, no. are we? Let's be honest. Okay. Unless you want to say Scaloni, we, we, don't know know the I'm quite yeah. happy we never know the answer, let's not have that a buzzer. That is true. Okay. Okay. Let's just sit here in silence and see how you react. Right, go on. That's all we've got to make. So, who is the only player to have scored a hat trick in all four tiers of the professional football in England? Oh. FA Cup, League Cup, and at international level. Is it Robert Earnshaw? We've got a scoreline! Yeah! Yeah! Come on, son. No, Robert I, Earnshaw. Yeah, he did the, uh, for West Brom. In, in the Premier League, League yeah. 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 Cardiff. In Division 1, 2, 3, FA Cup, and League Cup. And he scored for Wales. Because there was someone else who did sound like that. Um, I, I was thinking Ricky Lambert, but I don't remember Ricky Lambert. No, there was someone else. England, so. he, he, he ended up playing for... Was it Michael Bridges? Michael Bridges. He played well with Carlisle, didn't he? Yeah, he, I'm sure he scored... Oh, I can't remember, but yeah. Well, when did Michael Bridges score in Patrick for England? No, 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 he didn't do that. He was like oh. the first player to get a hat-trick in all four divisions or something I like that. I thought Ricky Lambert did that. Mm, I'll have to check it. But yeah, Robert Earnshaw. Well, yeah, Robert Earnshaw. So, 1-0 to Charlie. Fucking hell! I think I, right? again, I think well, I had an age of mine enjoying that because as you've like, used because you 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 were like up in an hour now. As you've one. used your World Cup stat about the no nil nils. Well, there's been plenty of one nils, haven't they? So <laughs> I'm joking for the series. Yeah, we'll stay like that after the rest of it. So, <laughs> good question. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Let us know your thoughts on the topics and the players in the shit list in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.